Now, before I start with Phil Nash, I would just first like to ask you, what do you get if you cross the Atlantic with the Titanic? Just over halfway. Phil Nash. Hello, so hopefully I'm on. Let me just start my slides. Here we go. So unified function call completions. To explain that, I need to first talk about unified function call syntax, which hopefully is more familiar to you. But even before that, I want a brief interlude on uh, strings, and in particular, super strings. Now, this is an expression that uh, Kevin Henney used a couple of times this morning. And while he was saying that, I was actually reading this uh, Fred from the, the Boost developers mailing list from way back in 2006, which was interest in a super string class. This was a proposal from Jeff Garland to introduce a, a really big string class into Boost at the time, which incorporated all of the Boost string algorithms, as well as uh, regexes and any other string oriented libraries that were in Boost, Boost at the time. And his argument was that this would actually make you more productive because it would be easier to, to find things, things would be more discoverable, consistent, just all in one place, just much easier to work with all around. And uh, in the, the ensuing thread, it even came up that it would be better for tallability as well. Um, but the thread is quite long, as you can see. There was a lot of pushback. It eventually ended up going nowhere. But there was a lot of support for this idea that uh, this would make things easier. And it's related to a, uh, another concept of having a class like stood string, which is effectively closed for modification because it's baked into the standard but still open for extension. It'd be nice if we could actually add things to it. Um, and you may recognize this as the open close principle or some variant of it. And I'm gonna talk about that more in my main talk on, on Saturday, but for now, yeah, really useful to reopen a class and, and add things to it. And other languages too have much better support for this. Uh, like C Sharp, for example, has extension methods that do that. Swift has extensions, similar concept. Uh, Rust has extension traits, which are really just traits uh, that do extensions because everything's a trait in Rust. Uh, Kotlin uh, has uh, extension methods as well. Now, C++ that we've been talking about doesn't have an equivalent feature. That's not through lack of trying. It's just uh, a collection of the uh, more recent proposals in that space that I've been able to find uh, since 2004. Uh, notice there's two in 2014, uh, one from Herb Sutter, one from uh, Bjarne Straustrup. You may have heard of them. Um, around this thing called unified call syntax or unified function call syntax, where you can take um, an object um, uh, and a function that calls that uh, object with the, with the first argument and treat it as if it was a method on that object. Uh, and whether that's reciprocal or not depends on which proposal you read. But by 2016, they'd merged that into a single proposal for wording, which then went nowhere. Unfortunately, got shot down. Uh, looks like we're not going to get anything like that anytime soon, at least, which is a real shame because there's a lot of good ideas there, uh, a lot of real motivation for it, a lot of uh, support for the idea. In fact, if we look at Herb's proposal in particular, there's a big section up front on the motivation he goes into. There's a really interesting paragraph right at the front of that where he says in part, uh, I'm becoming convinced that member function call syntax is actually preferable because it puts the argument first rather than the function first. When you start with the function name, the list of objects you can pass can be undecidable and possibly infinite. But when you start with an object, it's easy to narrow down a useful list of things you can do to that object. This aids programmer productivity, discoverability of APIs, and tool support. All those same things that we saw in Jeff's superstring thread. So that's interesting, and particularly about tool support, because the whole next section, which is even bigger, goes into tool support with IDEs and particularly makes a case that um, method call syntax is really friendly to uh, IDE completions, whereas function call syntax, not so much. He actually says fundamentally hostile uh, to, to autocomplete and even speculates it may be halting hard to support that in an IDE, which is interesting. Bit of a warning here. So I am a developer advocate at JetBrains for C-Line, and I'm going to show you briefly something in C-Line. If I come out of my screen share, this is the, the latest EAP of, of uh, C-Line you can download now. I've got a, a string algorithm here, um, split, you may have found in, in Jeff's library, I'm using string literals as well. I've got a string literal here, so I'm using the S suffix so we can treat it as a, as a sud string. So if I dot into that, we get our usual method completions. But if I start typing, I can find split. That function that, that takes string as the first argument, as if it was a method. If I accept that completion, 
it rewrites the code to the call to the function taking the string as the first argument. I can run that and show you that it all works quite nicely. That actually gives us most of the benefits from the motivation section in the Herb's proposal, but we didn't have to change the language. We changed the tools. And I think that's an important part of the analysis. So thank you. Perfect time. Thank you very much, Phil. And you gave me an excuse to hear the clacks in early doors, and that makes me very happy. <laughs> Gratuitous product placement, but we love you, so we'll let you off. What do you get if you cross a fizzy drink with a marsupial? Coca-Cola. 